Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I would like to talk about water changes, um, what water changes are, how to do one, and why they're important for your fish tank and for your fish's health. Um, well, let's start off with what is a water change. Water changes are essentially taking out some of your old aquarium water, some of your current aquarium water, removing some of that and filling the tank back up with clean, fresh water. Water changes are an essential part of keeping an aquarium healthy. You need to regularly replenish um, your water and replace old wastewater. The reason for this, it's kind of complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, all that all the waste that the fish produce, their poop, uneaten food, excess slime coat, all of that builds up in your aquarium because they're simply living in a box. And in order to get rid of it, we must take out some of that water. All of that waste water and too much quantity will kill your fish. It's not healthy for them. There are three stages of this waste. It's ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. It starts out as ammonia, the most toxic uh, to fish, which is very deadly in low amounts. Uh, on a scale, it will kill your fish or very, very uh, or harm them very much. Good bacteria builds up and then converts that waste into nitrite, which is a little less toxic than what ammonia is. In higher numbers, it is more toxic and has the potential to kill your fish. And then good bacteria converts that nitrite into nitrate. And nitrate is the least toxic of them all. It doesn't really uh, affect your fish too, too much in low numbers, but if you're looking at a scale and it's in very high numbers, it can harm your fish and it's not good to do that. If your tank is properly cycled, meaning there's enough bacteria to immediately remove ammonia and nitrite, then you shouldn't have too, too many problems with that. It all is converted to nitrate, and that nitrate is what is removed mainly during water changes. We have to get rid of the nitrate through water changes because there's no bacteria or anything else that is converting that waste, uh, the nitrate, into less harmful stuff like there would be for ammonia and nitrite. You might see some products on store shelves that try and sell you something that says you don't have to do water changes or gets rid of nitrate. And that for the most part is not true. They're just trying to sell you something. A water change is a very easy process and it's, it's the best way to solve most problems within your aquarium. Let's uh, go over how I do water changes and how many, you know, what I do to do water changes. For this demonstration, I'll use two um, two different buckets and a hose. One bucket I just use to fill up with clean water and I dechlorinate it. And the other bucket I use to siphon the wastewater in. And here is the hose which I will be drawing water from this tank right here to do a quick water change on. This is a simple water change that you can do easily in a planted tank. I don't have anything to place my phone on, so it's going to be kind of wonky, but it'll be okay. With this, you just place one end of your hose into your bucket, just like that. And then the other end of your hose goes into your tank. So typically, you I'm going to find a spot where I can easily place this hose to start the siphon. An easy way is just to suck on the end of it, but make sure where you're sucking, where the end of it is below where it is in the tank, otherwise the siphon won't start. It's all gravity fed, and so that's why you want to make sure. 
So I just started to siphon, I just sucked on the end of the tube a little bit, and now I'm drawing water out of the tank. You can see the water level quickly lowering. There's a sump back there that is re, um, that is drawing out of. Typically, I'd take about half of the water out of this tank once a week. Even though it's full of plants, I still like to do water changes to kind of remineralize and then replenish every fertilizer and give it uh, the plants some new healthy fertilizer. So we'll stop that siphon even though it's not quite halfway down yet. And then I will go get some new fresh water and fill the tank back up. So I filled the tank to the level I want. Now I didn't dechlorinate it. I'm not using an RO unit or store-bought water. I'm using regular tap water. And so I have to use, or I'm not using well water either, so I have to use a dechlorinator to take the chlorine and chloramines out. So I'm just going to add a little bit of stress coat. I use stress coat in my smaller tanks because it's less concentrated than prime. I use prime in my big tank. And then I will add a little bit of fertilizer. If you don't have live plants, you don't need to add fertilizer. However, adding a dechlorinator if you're on your city's water is very essential and potentially even if you're on a well as well because there might be some metals within that well that are too much for your, uh, that are too much for your tank and might be toxic, so you need to remove those using a dechlorinator. So that's done, and it took just a few minutes um, to, to drain and fill the water back up. Um, it's, not, it's, uh, it's not that difficult to do. The water I poured in there was close enough to the temperature of the tank. Um, it's got a heater in there to, to keep it stable and to get it at the proper temperature. That is something to consider though, is the temperature go of the water going into your tank. It needs to be close um, to the temperature of your tank. If you have tropical tank about you know, 78 degrees, whatever your heater is set at. Um, if you get the water too hot, um, take off the lid to your tank and let the heat evaporate and cool down. Potentially put a fan, turn a fan on in your room, turn your AC on and let that heat kind of dissipate and that way you'll be safe. If it's too cold, um, what I've done in the past, if I've gotten bottles, just regular water bottles, and put hot, hot water in them and, and stuck it in my tank until it got to the proper temperature. An alternative would just be to lower the temperature set on your, on your thermostat, your heater, and then make it even with the tank temperature and slowly raise it up, but that takes several hours. So if you need to heat it up fast, the water bottle method works phenomenally. This tool right here is a gravel vac. Now, I don't have any gravel in my tank, so I don't need to gravel vac um, my tanks. I just use this as a regular siphon to get into the water a bit deeper. But this is a great tool that you can use to stick down in your gravel and siphon the water out, as well as all the junk. But the gravel is heavy, and it doesn't go out with the water. It doesn't clog. It just all settles back down after you pull the gravel back out of the gravel. And all the waste from the fish, uneaten fish food, fish poop, all that, gets sucked up along with your wastewater into your waste bucket. Alternatively, this is a really long hose. So if you're near with a window, within reasonable distance of a window, you could buy a longer hose of the same diameter that would fit a gravel vac like this and run it out your window so you don't have to carry another bucket around whenever filling, uh, whenever draining your tank, which is never fun. That's the one thing that keeps people from doing water changes I hear is carrying the buckets. Um, and that's fun, not fun. I don't like doing it, but we have to do it sometimes. A helpful tool that I picked up later is this right here. It's connected to a normal gravel vac, just like this, but this adapts to your faucet. You 
can also do it to your water hose as well if that's uh, available to you and your near window. But this will hook up to your faucet, water hose, and drain out through this end right here. And then you simply flip this valve right here and it will start filling up your tank. So it starts to siphon with the pressure from the water. You turn on your water, let the siphon start, turn off your water, and then let your tank drain down the drain or outside if you're using the hose. And then get the water, I get the water to the temperature using a thermometer of the tank and I just and then I flip the flip the valve and I start filling the tank back up. Um, it is very helpful tool, especially if you have a bigger tank like uh, like you know 55 gallon upwards it's very helpful i would say but really any tank if you have the option of putting one in there um, if you have the space to store it a long hose like this takes up a lot of space then i would say go for it because it will make your life so much easier um but yeah everything uh about it it's very simple and it's very essential. It takes just a couple minutes out of your day in order to do something like that and it keeps your tank clean, it keeps your tank balanced, it keeps your tank healthy and that's very important, consistency in keeping a healthy tank. Um, they are, it is essential to do water changes um, and it only benefits your fish and it only benefits you. I don't have a tripod yet, so I couldn't demonstrate too, too much more of how I do water changes, but just that basic one over with the little tank over there. Um, but I hope I get a little bit of insight on why they're important and how to do one. Um, but later on, once I get a tripod, we can explore um, how, you know, a bit more with water changes. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.